What's up, guys? Coach Madden, YouGoProBaseball.com, here with Doug Bernier. Uh, you may recognize him from Pro Baseball Insider or from the Major League. He played uh, for a while. He was an infielder. And, in fact, he's got a 1,000 fielding percentage. He's never missed a ball in the big leagues. So when we're talking about fielding, this is the guy you want to listen to. And that's what we're talking about today, how to have smooth, soft, fast hands. What do you got for him? Yeah. All right, well, I got two things for you guys. And first thing I want to talk about is the glove and how we deal with the glove. You probably see a lot of infielders, um, and they got a lot of quick action, quick movement with their, with their glove. And what they're actually doing is they're putting more tension in their hand, and they're making fielding the ball a lot more difficult. When you are moving your glove and you have a lot of timing and you're flipping the glove down and trying to look, look cool, you know, what you're doing is you are you're timing the glove with the ball, and it makes it a lot more difficult. When someone's throwing you a ball, you're playing catch with your buddy, right? As the ball's coming, you just have your glove open and you make the catch, right? You're not flapping your glove around to make the catch. We want to apply the same concept when fielding a ground ball. So as the ball's coming, have the glove open, have it set, and then just use your feet to feel the ball. Take the movement out of your glove. That will relax your hand. That will make your hands look and feel a whole lot smoother, and it'll make your hands softer. So that is the first thing we want to focus on. Number two is our feet. Now our feet directly um, affect how our glove works, right? So if we are stomping after the ball like this, like a caveman or something, what it's doing is it's putting a lot more, um, it, it's just making our hands harder. When we go after the ball, we want to be on our toes. We want to be soft with our feet. And when that happens, our hands will be softer. So. Remember that we want to have nice, soft feet. We don't want to be landing on our heels, feel like you're on your toes. And then with your glove, just take the movement out. Have your glove open and preset and be waiting on the ball. It will make it a whole lot easier. Those are some really great tips. Now, I want to talk about something that I hear on the channel a lot yeah. uh, about receiving the ball. Uh -huh. One, there's a big debate whether you're trying to come through the baseball or you're trying to funnel it in to the middle of your body. What's your uh, take on this? All right, see, I get a lot of debate on this too, and, and I don't know if there's really one right way or the other, but for me, this is what I like to do. I like to work through the baseball, and I'll kind of turn to the side a little bit, but what I like is when I'm fielding through the baseball, I keep this glove integrity, and I know we'll probably talk about that at some point, but I like to work this way. When I funnel the baseball, what happens for me is when I'm pulling back to my chest or, or the center of my body, a lot of times I'm pulling away from the ball before it actually hits my glove. So when I'm concentrating on working through the ball, it helps me secure the ball first. And then once the ball's in my glove and I start using my feet to go to my target, then the glove just kind of naturally comes to the center of my body. Um, and one other point too, when I do funnel and I'm kind of pulling out too early, what happens is my glove goes from here to here. And that's not a good thing either. We want to have our glove open it fully open to the ball. That's a great point. Now, you mentioned earlier about being loose uh, yeah. with the glove and everything. What about like at the point of contact, like the point of you fielding the ball? Are you being a little stiffer? Are you still loose at that point? How does that work? No, I want to be as relaxed as I can. So. Um, when I take my glove off, I don't want to be squeezing the ball or squeezing the glove. I want to form the form the glove how you know how it fits my hand, and I want to trust that that when the ball hits it, that the, that the glove is going to do its job and just secure the baseball. So I want to keep my hand as relaxed and as soft as possible, and then once the ball hits, it will just it will just stick in the glove. With that being said where, because uh, I was a pitcher, I wasn't yeah. an infielder, but when I'm fielding the ball off of the mound, I always felt like the ball was uh, a little bit deeper in my glove, not in the in the pocket, maybe not deeper, more shallow, I should right, say, right. not deep in the pocket. It was more here. Where are you actually trying to grab that ball inside the glove? All right, see, I'm actually trying to feel the ball in my palm. I'm trying to feel it right in the middle of my hand. When that happens, I know exactly where the ball is. I know infielders, you guys have probably done this. I've done this before. When you catch the ball in... Um, you know, in the pocket or kind of deep in there a little bit, sometimes you kind of fumble around and you kind of lose where it is in your glove. When it hits you in the palm, you know exactly where it is. It's shallow in your glove and it's easy to get out. Let's talk about how you wear your glove. Because okay. me, I, I put two 
fingers in the pinky. Right. I started doing that in pro ball. It made a little bit deeper pocket. Now I was a pitcher again, so that, you know, for me, it, it was okay to have a deep pocket. How did you wear your glove? Were you pink, uh, finger in, finger out? Okay, I wear it traditionally. I do have a finger out, um, but I would say probably half the infielders go with two fingers over in the pinky um, uh, portion of their glove. And, and so I don't think there's one, again, I don't think there's one right way or the other. But the reason why I like, um, you know, have the more traditional way is because it made my pocket a little bit shallower especially when I was turning double plays at second base, this being, uh, keeping the pocket shallow allowed me to get the ball out quicker when I was turning it. Um, kind of like what we talked about before, when I, if I was to slide the two uh, fingers over into the pinky, what would happen is that would get deep and sometimes I would not, I, I was not able to get the ball out quick or just kind of got lost in there at times. Now, let me ask you this. When you're working on double plays over there, are you ever doing anything working on just flipping with the glove or, or doing crazy stuff uh, to work on those uh, uh, plays that you might not get all the time? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, we all wanna make routine plays, right? And that's what we're expected to make. We're expected to make every routine play. But in a game, you know that you're gonna have to, you know, make a throw from your knees sometime. You're gonna have to dive. You're gonna have to do a spin throw or a glove flip. That just happens in the game. But if you never practice it, then once it happens in the game, it's gonna be foreign and you're probably not gonna be able to make the play. So. Yeah, I mean, routine stuff is important. Work on that every day, but hey, have some fun at the end of it, right? Do a couple glove flips, man. Throw from down here. Do a little spin jump throw or something. That will help you become a more complete infielder. Awesome, awesome. We got to make a video about that. Yeah. If you guys want to see that video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up on this video. If we get to 500 likes on this video, we'll publish that video where we talk about the glove flips and how to work on that stuff. So thank you so much, guys, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Pro Baseball Insider here on YouTube and across the other social uh, platforms, as well as You Go Pro Baseball. And if you have any questions, hop down in the comments below. Uh, we'd love to hop down there and help answer any of those that you got. And I'll leave a link down below for all of Doug's stuff. He's got a great newsletter. So check those out in the description down below. Thanks, guys. See you guys.